like gays and lesbians um, want to get married to the person that they love. And so denying the right to GLBT people to marry one another is essentially denying their right to pursue happiness. And, you know, the question in front of the um, Supreme Court essentially is equal treatment under the law. And it is absolutely a tenet of the American Civil Liberties Act and, and just in terms of what we stand for as a country. Everyone knows and understands if you're an American that you are to be treated equally and not um, specially treated, you know, over someone else. So, you know, those those who are opposed to gay marriage or so against gay marriage, you know, essentially just don't marry a gay person. It's pretty simple. I mean, I know it sounds simplistic, but it really has nothing to do with them. I mean, they're still free to marry anybody, you know, heterosexual partner, um, just as they, they've always been free to do. And they're still free to marry anyone they want, despite the race or religion or creed or anything else. But if they're gay, if they're the same sex, then in many states, it's not legal. And in the first place, you know, no one's proposing that um, heterosexual, quote unquote, marriage change at all. I mean, heterosexuals can still marry and divorce anybody they want, anytime they want, completely unaffected by the institution of gay marriage. So there's no change there, not even a little bit. And, and then there's the issue of divorce. So if we're supposed to worship the traditional status and nature of marriage, why do we feel, you know, that we can allow divorce so freely, which has only been legal in most states for just a few decades? So to suggest to most people, you know, who are the ardent supporters of this argument that they should not only be married, but will only get one shot at getting it right and a mistake will permanently ruin their life will sound, you know, bad. But how much less is the notion that one will have to marry someone one cannot love and to whom cannot, one cannot relate is to, just to enjoy the benefits of marriage. So clearly it's hypocritical. On the one hand, asserting that the importance of traditional nature of marriage while allowing its destruction through um, the thoroughly modern concept of divorce with a, hardly a second thought demonstrates very clearly that this really isn't about traditional definitions at all. What it is about is about using this argument as a cover for another, you know, for another less acceptable motivation. Why not recognize the hypocrisy in this argument and that there is no sound moral ground on which to support the notion of worshipfully traditional heterosexual marriage while freely allowing the destruction through divorce. So wouldn't it just be better to recognize that the concept of marriage is not originally traditional or fixed as it's claimed to be? I mean, that's the case. So to say traditional marriage is between one man and one woman, that's what we hear all the time. Marriage is between a husband and a wife, a man and a woman, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's the most often heard argument that people are always stating, and that's something that's codified in the law of the United States because of DOMA. So, but it's also the weakest argument, you know, who says that marriage is to be defined by one particular group of people, the married people, the people who can get married. And it seems to me that if the straight community cannot show a compelling reason to deny the institution of marriage to gay people, it shouldn't be denied. And such simple declarations of, are hardly, you know, a compelling reason. There's really more like an expression of prejudice in, than anything, than any kind of real argument. The concept of not denying people their rights unless you can show a compelling reason to do so is the very basis of the American, of the American ideal of human rights. And marriage is between a husband and a wife and a husband and a husband and a husband and a wife and a wife and a wife or whatever the case may be. Marriage is what is defined to be as has evolved over the many centuries from the beginning when it first started was just a transfer of property, a man owning his wife as property, for example, to what we have now, the modern day definition is where two people who are in love and want to share a life together get married. So the institution of marriage is not static and has changed significantly over time. Married women used to be the legal property of their husbands and interracial marriages were prohibited, you know, by anti miscegenation law. So a strong institution accommodates social and cultural shifts. Granting LGBT people the right to marry is simply the evolution of human rights. And you know, the federal marriage amendment would ban any protections under the law for same-sex couples. It does do that. And so the amendment goes a lot further than simply saying that marriage is a union between a man and a woman. It's really a very discriminatory, harsh measure that prevents same-sex couples who have made commitments to each other from having any basic rights and protections under the law. 
you know, people on the right wing are always continuing to pass legislation that will essentially try to write discrimination and bigotry into the Constitution to prevent equal marriage rights. And throughout all of history, the U.S. Constitution has been used to ensure and protect and expand individual liberties of all people in the United States of America, not to take away rights, not to prevent rights, to restrict rights, and not to expand them is, is wrong. It is completely against the essence of what it means to be an American. It is completely against the essence of what the Constitution stands for. So for people who are for DOMA or um, the Defense of Marriage Act, whatever you want to call it, same thing, it, it is it – is, Essentially, you saying that you are for writing into the Constitution and you agree that it's okay to take away rights people may have, intrinsically have, inalienable rights, which is to pursue happiness. So I should start, or we, those of us who are um, unfortunately affected by DOMA, something to write into the Constitution that states that if you get, if you get married, you can never get divorced. You are stuck with a person for the rest of your life, no matter what. That goes to straight people, gay people, whatever. You are always going to be with that person no matter what. I bet a lot of people, a lot of heterosexual people would really have a problem with that <laughs> because half the people who get married, who are heterosexual, who get married, get divorced. And I don't think they would be very happy if they knew that they couldn't ever get a divorce once they got married. And so as a bargaining chip – Maybe we should write that into the Constitution, and that will continue to be the way things will have to be as long as gays cannot have equal treatment under the law. It's not fair for us to say a certain class of people can and cannot do something but simply because it is against one's personal morality or belief system. And that is the difference between – Wanting something for oneself and something that is actually completely based upon your own moral compass, which is typically based on religious reasons, but anyway, um, and something that is actually based in fact and legality and the realis the real the realistic side of things and uh, rational side of things is what I'm trying to say, and that is the difference, and that's what doesn't make any sense is because none of these arguments against gay marriage make any sense. Um, and both Republicans and Democrats, you know, from across both political sp spectrums or whatever, you know, generally oppose a constitutional amendment because they understand that it's a very slippery slope. And leading, you know, conservatives have basically criticized the constitutional amendment, uh, you know, as little more than a political you know, tool or whatever for election day. So they're using our livelihood, the livelihood of couples and gay couples and people who want to get married as a bargaining chip and not using – looking at this, this, the – what's the word? The uh, solemnness and how the importance of being married to some people. And look, you know, marriage is about – people – okay, well, one thing people are always saying is marriage is about bringing together men and women so they can have kids, right? People are always saying, well, that's the purpose of marriage. The purpose of marriage is so kids can, can procreate. Well, if that's the case, then that means – People who are infertile couples, you know, should not be allowed to marry either. If you're an infertile couple, you can't have children. If the purpose of marriage is procreation, then that means those people cannot get married. So essentially, people who are over 55 years old or whatever, couples who are over that age, shouldn't be able to get married either. And you know, I'd love to be the one who, you know, is going to enforce that argument and say to every postmenopausal mother or a dad who's impotent or something who can't have sex with their, their wife, so they can't therefore procreate, that they have to now turn over their wedding rings because they, they – well, they can't have kids, so they're no, no longer able to be married. I mean it's so fucking ludicrous. The whole thing is ludicrous and ridiculous, but it is essentially the argument that people continue to make. Um, you know, And the people who raise the objection never object to infertile couples marrying. I mean they they when they're a retired single parent or, or whatever – or mother or dad or whatever, you know, is past their re reproductive age and they want to get married again or something, the usual reaction is how cute and how sweet or whatever. It's not like, oh, my God, you're past the age of procreation. You shouldn't get married now. I mean it's so fucking ridiculous. And, you know, marriage has never been an institution established or existing specifically for the purpose of bringing together two men – or men and women together, I should say, so kids can have mothers and fathers. It's absolutely ludicrous. You know, to think that that's the purpose of marriage. So, you know, 
I, that's another argument that's ridiculous. But I wanted to um, also say, you know, same-sex couples. Another another argument people make is same-sex couples aren't the optimum environment to raise to raise kids, which, you know, that's ridiculous too. I mean, if would you rather have a child that is raised by two loving parents, two normal loving parents? I mean, someone who's not going to abuse them or harm them in any way. Two normal loving gay parents and have them being in a um, a adoption agency or in the foster system or whatever for their entire childhood. I mean, that's what happens the majority of the time is kids age out of the system until they're 21 years old or whatever it age is. I think it's 21 years old now. So they get to 21 years old and then, no, nope, okay, bye. You're gone. You're on your own. When there are plenty of gay people in some states that won't allow gay people to adopt, there are plenty of gay people who would adopt those children, would have adopted them had they – been given the chance or opportunity, but they won't simply because they're gay. And so that that harms the kids in this country. That harms the children and, and adoption agencies. And and not being not gays not being allowed to get married it, in and of itself also harms the kids. And there are over six hundred thousand gay families in this country. That's a lot. Okay. That is a lot. Six hundred thousand gay families. So that means Families that are two men, two women, I mean, it's two lesbians, two gay men or whatever, or just one gay man and one lesbian who have adopted a kid or have had kids through artificial insemination or whatever, or had had kids from a previous heterosexual relationship or whatever the case may be. When you deny the right of gay people to actually have equality under the law, the federal law, then these children have to suffer because they – are pulled in all different directions, especially if they end up splitting up. And then what happens? One one parent they know is their father, and the other parent they know is their father, and they they have to decide between the two who to live with and whatever. And one may have their name, one may not have their name. And even if you have legal documentation, it doesn't guarantee that you'll be safe from anything. So it really puts undue stress on these families to not be able to um, claim as a couple this child. You can have one person claim it. Like in Texas, for example, you can adopt as a gay man uh, or a lesbian, but you can only adopt as an individual. You cannot adopt as a couple. <laughs> so fucking stupid. You, so I could go out and adopt a kid all by myself, or my husband Michael could go out and adopt a kid all by himself, and he or I would have custody of that child alone. Even though we are together and have been married for six years and, and are planning to raise that child together, we would not be able to do so. Because we are gay. So, oh my God, I could go on and on and on about this, and I probably will, but I just wanted to say that the ridiculousness and ludicrousness of all of this stuff is ridiculous. So I'm going to come back in a minute, take a quick break, and I'm going to talk about um, the morality side of things and how people argue about being gay and that sort of thing. If you want to call in, the number is 323-843-6160. I will be right back. <laughs> 